You're not getting any particular rates anymore at the time you were leaving? <coughs> not that I recall. I think they had the uh, LAM RCS uh, system up, and so it would be difficult to tell even then whether they did have any rates. Uh, they were transitioning from one, one spacecraft control system to another and, and running back and forth through the tunnel and aligning the platform. There's an awful lot of activity going on, and we didn't ask them what the rates were. I believe I heard uh, Fred Hayes mention that uh, it might be considered to use a deep space abort in order to uh, immediately get the burn over with and power down the limb so you wouldn't have that drain in keeping it powered up till they get around the moon. Has this been completely disregarded now? We can't. Uh, the position we are now on the Earth moon plane, we have to go around the, the, uh, the moon to get back if we're going to use the DIPS engine. You would have had enough capability with the SPS engine, but of course we don't dare use that now. So we have to go to the back side and we'll come back. I have a question in three parts. First of all, if they do uh, choose the Pacific method of recovery, will the recovery point be changed from original planning or will it still be the same? I think it, it's uh, moved west and south some. I think it's about 165 degrees west and uh, some 20 degrees south. It, it is farther south and farther west than the end of mission. Well, uh, the other two questions uh, kind of combine. Uh, if you did it landed in the, in the Atlantic and you did uh, have to go to a ship of opportunity, would you hesitate at all to ask any ship of any nation? No, sir, I wouldn't. Will this necessitate uh, future thinking toward a backup recovery uh, fleet in the in the Atlantic? We certainly will reassess that, yes, sir. Yeah, what are the back there? Uh, Chris, will you come in at 400K, and uh, will there be any problem in jettisoning the uh, LAM no. and, uh, entry? Or, or All that's what done. will be that mechanic, sir? It, it's done the same way as it is around the moon, and the same way coming back uh, from the from the moon with the service module. You have pyrotechnic batteries and separate pyrotechnic uh, lines, electrical sources, which uh, are dependent only on those power sources. So uh, we don't have any problems there in terms of uh, separation. Now, the, uh, the dynamics, mechanics of the thing would not be a problem either. Uh, for, for Jim McDevitt, uh, uh, is, is a situation like occurred in Bay 4 something that might have occurred if it was hit by a, uh, a meteorite. And for uh, Chris Kraft, in, in following up your earlier comments, uh, uh, do, you, do you feel they have a good chance to make it back? Well, you asked me first. It was, <clears throat> there was something uh, which appeared to be quite violent that occurred in Bay 4. And yes, if you were stuck by a meteor, it would be quite violent. Uh, I'm not as assuming that's what happened, Mark, but that could have done it. Yes, I think their chances are excellent at the moment, assuming that the lunar module continues to operate well. Uh, can you think of anything else that might cause such a violent event as, besides a meteor? Well, yeah. We could probably think of an infinite number of things that could... Well, two or three that would be well, within the realms of likelihood, I mean. I guess I, I really... There are a lot of things that could have happened. It would be just pure conjecture. Anything that's down there that's pressurized could have let go, and there are all kinds of pressurized things. There are pressurized hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fuel cells. Uh, it's a very complicated bay that, that this happened in. Very uh, What is the moment that you have to uh, get everybody out of the limb and back into the command module and seal it off and uh, and get ready for entry? I mean, what, how late can you get can you use the limb before you, you have to go to the batteries on the command module? It's pretty late. It doesn't take too long to uh, get back in the CSM. The thing that you want to make sure is that uh, you have adequate time to put the hatch in and blow the limb off. And that really doesn't take very long. I'm uh, sure that will be wait. a process where yeah. a couple of them will get back in the CSM, get everything set up, and they'll do that as late as possible. I guess uh, we'd have to work that out. 30 minutes or hour or 15 minutes or some range like that. We want to start using the CSM batteries as late as possible. Okay, we're going to come up the middle. Harry? Uh, uh, on the present trajectory, how far beyond the moon will they go before they start to hook back? And what would the missed distance at the Earth be without a correcting 
burn from the dips. Well, the present traject trajectory, we would come within about 60 nautical miles of the back side of the moon. We are not on a free return trajectory at present. Uh, it would take a very small burn say in the next five or 10 hours to get us back on a free return on the order of 20 to 40 feet per second. I can't answer your second question about how far we miss. I don't know. Right here. Uh, will the dip spurn be the major rocket maneuver you will make on coming back? And if so, where will it be? On the far side of the moon? Or It'll be, be on the far side. Yes, it will be the dips. It will be on the some, some place between Paraloon on the far side of the moon and uh, two hours after that. Just pick these up coming up the middle of the aisle. We'll just take them both sides here. All right, Paul, go ahead. Do you recall the, my, the um, approximate mileage at which point you can still do a deep space abort and come back? Uh, what is the crossover? 140, 150,000? It's probably farther than that, Paul. I don't remember the exact number, but if, uh, I think at the time of this incident, if you'd used the, the SPS engine, you could just about have done it, but it would have taken just about the whole thing. 176,000, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. If I recall, side, Paul, I think the number was 9,000 foot per yeah. second and, and about 140 hours. What, what would cause you to choose the Atlantic over the Pacific for recovery? And are you now surveying the Atlantic to find out what ships are available to you? Uh, yes, we are surveying the Atlantic to find out what ships are available. Uh, I think the only reason you go to the, the Atlantic, if sometime between now and the burn, something would happen to make you very time critical in getting back. Burn more quickly or sooner? No, it's a bigger burn to go to the Atlantic. It's about uh, 2,000 or 1,900 feet per second and get you back uh, some nine hours earlier. How many feet per second? It's about 900. Right, let's come up to here. We have the gentleman in, this, in the middle of the road here. In the, in the khaki jacket. Um, in the transcript, uh, I'd like to read from this. Uh, Lovell says, um, yes, um, I've got to put the cabin retreat valve in there. Every time he does that, our hearts jump in our mouths. Now, I don't understand what he's talking about here, but could this have anything to do with the, with the accident? If, if something happened that made their hearts jump in their mouths, what was it? Uh, I think he's talking about the cabin repress valve and the lamb which goes bang when you operate it. Well, look, Divot uh, said that uh, any specialization could do anything. Is there any link here? Any pressure? Uh, no. I guess I don't understand the, the question. It didn't, the, what you're asking is, did that uh, statement have anything to do with the accident? And I think oh, definitely no. not. He was talking about something that went on in the lunar module as opposed to the, where the accident occurred in the command service mine. <laughs> I'd like to go back to uh, Bay 4. Uh, do you expect to be able to tell exactly what happened there, and if so, how soon? Well, we have people working at it right now, and I don't know whether we'll ever be able to tell exactly what happened there or not. We're reducing the data like we do on all of the, on the space flights and whenever we have an anomaly, and uh, to date we've been quite successful in determining what happened. Whether or not we are in this case, I have no idea. We're certainly going to do the best job that we can. Well, sometimes it takes a long time. I have no idea on this. I haven't seen the data myself at all. We were trying to figure out what to do rather than to to, uh, to play out the old data. And that's what we'll be doing till we get them back on the water, is concentrating on everything that is de their, their lives are dependent upon at the moment rather than worrying about the accident, because there's nothing we can do about that now. This service module is no longer useful in most cases because the oxygen is depleted. So uh, other than the fact that you've got uh, propulsion, some propulsion left and uh, the batteries in the command module and uh, we're going to worry about those situations from now to splash. Initially we were, we were trying to find out what was wrong down there so we could possibly correct it before we lost the oxygen. We weren't able to do that in time and I think that we'll put that effort on a very low priority right now and work on the other stuff. Pardon? Any, no, no hints.
What about your thermal control situation? The, uh, do you expect any problems from heat to, because of your configuration now? Well, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to just maintain a single attitude hold all the way to the moon and back. Uh, we're going to do something. And we're, we've been working on that. I guess the guys are working on that now, aren't they? So, I don't think we can answer that question truthfully because we've never had a situation where we had not had powered up conditions in the command module and, and powered conditions in the LEM. So it, uh, that's probably going to be a real-time situation. Chris, uh, at the risk of asking you to oversimplify a very complex situation, and uh, certainly I don't mean this facetiously, is there any concern, real concern, can you get them back?